Good evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. Croatian fishermen from Savudria and Umag set sail for their traditional fishing grounds in Savudria Bay this morning. They were accompanied by Croatian police patrol boats. When they reached the border demarcation, they were issued a warning by Slovene patrol boat. Fishermen from the Savudria area will meet with Agriculture Minister Tomislav Tolušić in Zagreb tomorrow to address concerns regarding Slovenia's threats to issue them fines. We were accompanied the entire time by two of our police boats. One Slovenian patrol boat and a Slovenian fisheries inspector were also following us. They warned us on one occasion, when we came closer, that we were in Slovenian territorial waters, but that's it. They wrote something down, but you don't really have too much time to see exactly what's going on. Today, all of us fishermen from Savudria are meeting to agree on how we will proceed. Tomorrow we're heading for Zagreb. When we return, we will know exactly where we stand. Speaking for Croatian television today, one of the driving forces behind protecting the rights of Croatian fishermen, Danilo Latin from Savudria, commented on Slovenia's announced fines. The first question is how will Slovenia issue these fines to Croatian fishermen? The normal procedure is to forward them via the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Unfortunately, our previous experience has been that they didn't respect this norm either, and instead delivered the fines to home addresses. However, it is possible that Croatian citizens do not receive these fines by mail, which means that they have not been made aware of the fines against them. Meanwhile, the European Commission has called on Croatia and Slovenia to continue with dialogue at all levels and to avoid any action that could disrupt bilateral talks. The Commission continues to stand ready to contribute or to facilitate the process of how to best implement the final award made by the Arbitration Tribunal of, uh, permanent court, of the Permanent Court of Arbitration. And once we are on our way in this process, the College will come back to the issue uh, to discuss the progress and to see how the Commission can help uh, bring about a full and just implementation of the award. In other news, Labour and Pension System Minister Marko Pavic announced on Croatian radio today that government plans on raising the minimum wage again in September. Addressing government's active employment policy for 2018, the minister said that one of the goals is to increase wages in a bid to keep workers, especially younger workers, in Croatia. In so much as we reach an agreement with our social partners, and I believe that we will, the idea is to establish the minimum wage every year in September, so that employers have adequate time to plan their upcoming fiscal year. Along with compensation measures, which we will additionally define for labor-intensive industry, this will create room for a more significant increase in the minimum wage. Addressing Croatia's troubling demographic situation on Croatian television today, Marin Strmata, the state secretary for demographics, announced a series of new measures aimed at reversing the negative trend. Government has already raised the baby bonus and expanded the program to include an additional 100,000 families. It has also raised the amount it will spend on its pronatal policy this year. Within the 200, 250 and 300 kuna baby bonus, there is a pro-natality supplement for the third and fourth child in a family of 500 kuna. And by including 50% more homes, roughly 95,000 more families, which means we will be covering 40% more children than before. And we are making yet another step forward in terms of financially helping families. The Big Heart to Small Heart Humanitarian Association of Doctors, Healthcare Workers and Parents of Children Who Have Congenital Heart Defects or Other Heart Diseases donated a new electrocardiogram machine to the Pediatric Cardiology Department of Rijeka's Clinical Hospital today. The donation is valued at 25,000 kuna and is expected to make healthcare workers' jobs easier. I have to say that we are quite well equipped on almost all fronts. I guess you could say that we are short one bicycle for the ECG stress test, but we shouldn't be modest because we have an excellent ultrasound machine. And taking a quick look at sports, American Michaela Schifrin won the Snow Queen World Cup slalom on Zagreb's Mount Sliema today. This is her third win in Zagreb. Austria's Wendy Holdener was second, followed by Frida Hansdotter of Sweden. Croatia's Leona Popovic was 47th overall, while Ida Stimac did not finish. 
The men's slalom will be held tomorrow with the first run at 12.45 and the second at 4.30. And now the forecast for tomorrow. Variable cloud cover with some sunny spells. Expect more cloud cover in the second half of the day when there is a slight chance of some light rain in Gorski Kotar and on the northern Adriatic. Southern Dalmatia will see some overnight rain with snow at higher elevations. There will be a mild to moderate westerly and northwesterly in the interior, shifting to a southwesterly in the evening. The coast will see a moderate to strong northwesterly and northeasterly in the first half of the day. This will shift to a southeasterly in the afternoon, starting on the northern Adriatic and then spreading to the rest of the coast. Morning lows of minus 3 to plus 3 degrees Celsius inland, 3 to 8 on the Adriatic, will give way to highs of 6 to 11 degrees in the interior, 10 to 15 on the coast. The three-day forecast for the interior calls for even warmer weather, especially over the weekend. Expect a variable cloud cover with sunny spells. There is a chance of some light rain in northern parts of the interior on Friday and in mountainous and hinterland areas on Saturday. There will be a moderate to strong southwesterly and southeasterly. The coast will see moderate to heavy cloud cover, especially on the northern Adriatic. There will be some intermittent rain, again primarily on the northern coast. Expect strong southeasterly winds, gale forced on Sunday. And that wraps up the news. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night.